भैया जी एक किलो प्याज कितने का दिया बीस रूपए किलो भैया क्या बीस रूपए पिछले हफ्ते तो पंद्रह रूपए का था इन्फ्लेशन भैया महंगाई का जमाना है ना और दो सौ अच्छे अरुद्रवा पा अरुद्रवा ना लास्ट टाइम साबुन में दाम बहुत रहा था सुनिएगा इन्फ्लेशन पा वैला वासीला अधिक मार्ट चे हेलो यस सर आई वांट टू बुक अ रूम इन योर होटल फॉर टू नाइट्स कैन यू टेल मी व्हाट इस द कॉस्ट यस सर द कॉस्ट इस सिक्स थाउजेंड रुपीस पर नाइट प्लस जीएसटी सिक्स थाउजेंड सर लास्ट टाइम मैंने कॉल्ड यू यू टोल्ड मी टू इस फाइव थाउजेंड इन्फ्लेशन सर एवरीथिंग इज बिकमिंग कॉस्टली इन्फ्लेशन 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 कैन एनीबडी कंट्रोल दिस इन्फ्लेशन So friends, RBI has a magic wand through which it controls inflation and in this video I will explain you how this magic show is performed by RBI. Inflation means the value of money reduces which means in future what you can buy for 100 rupees will be less than what you can buy for 100 rupees today and inflation happens due to demand and supply gap. If the demand is more and supply is less then the prices will increase and it will lead to inflation. But why is the demand more? because there is more money supply in the economy and people have more money with them and when you have more money what will you do you will go and buy something right and if there is a short supply of that particular product in the market what will happen the prices will increase and it will lead to inflation now to control inflation either supply has to be increased or demand has to be reduced but increasing the supply is not so easy assume let us take an example In India the total production capacity of cars by all the companies in India is 1 lakh cars per month production capacity but the demand for cars right now is 1 lakh 50000 cars per month what is happening if you see there is a demand and supply gap now if you want to increase the supply of cars you need to build more factories plants and all this will take lot of time and this is applicable for any product increasing the supply is not so easy in a short span of time So the best way is to reduce the demand and how will you reduce the demand by reducing the money supply in the economy so the process by which the RBI controls the money supply in the economy is known as monetary policy and there are four ways of managing the monetary policy cash reserve ratio statutory liquid ratio open market operations then repo and reverse repo rates now let us understand each of them one by one cash reserve ratio CRR all of us deposit our money in the bank accounts right friends savings bank account fixed deposit recurring deposits and banks use the money received from the deposit holders to give loans to others this is the basic function of a bank accepting deposits for the purpose of lending now whatever money you deposit in the bank the bank cannot lend all the money as loan you all agree with me this now it has to keep some amount as reserve with the rbi and the balance amount only it can be given as loans to others this reserve is known as cash reserve ratio and crr is kept because if someone wants to withdraw the money from their account the bank should have money with itself to give to the person right that's why crr is kept and the assumption behind crr is that all the deposit holders will not come on one particular day to withdraw all of their money let's take an example to understand this let's say you deposit 1 lakh rupees in your bank account okay and the crr set by the rbi to the banks is 5 percentage so bank can now lend only 95000 rupees as loans to others now during inflation rbi will increase the crr say for example from 5% to 10% now the bank can lend only 90000 rupees as loan instead of 95000 so due to lower lending capacity the money supply will reduce in the economy people will have less money in their hands and the inflation will also automatically come down technically now crr is 4.5 percentage of net demand and term liabilities and it was increased from 4 percentage in may 2022 So the next method is statutory liquid ratio (SLR), and SLR is similar to CRR, but there is a small difference. All banks have to maintain a portion of the deposits in cash and cash equivalents, right? Cash, you all know, which is simple. Cash equivalents means which is easily convertible into cash, like gold, government bonds, securities, etc. 
So let's say you deposit 1 lakh rupees in a bank account, right? And the SLR set by the RBI to the banks is 15 percentage, which means bank has to keep now 15,000 in the form of cash and cash equivalents. And the balance money can only be lent by the banks, which is 80 percent. That is 100 minus 5 percent is CRR, 15 percent is SLR. So 100 minus 20 is 80,000. Only the bank can lend as loans. So during inflation, what will the RBI do? RBI will increase the SLR from 15 percentage to say, for example, 20 percentage, which means the banks will have to now keep more money in the form of cash and cash equivalents, and it will have less money with itself to give loans to the public thereby reducing the money supply in the economy and finally because of this inflation will also come down currently the slr is now 18 percentage of total demand and time liabilities so the next point is open market operations if you see friends rba also issues government securities bonds and treasury bills to banks nbfcs and big financial institutions like lic uti etc so when rbi issues securities banks will buy them and the money will flow from banks to the RBI, thereby reducing the money supply in the economy. And these securities issued by RBI can also be bought back by RBI from the banks and NBFCs. And that time, money will flow from RBI to the banks. So inflation, in inflation, what do you think the RBI will do? It will issue more securities to the banks and all these NBFCs so that money will move out from the banks and it will come to the RBI. Because, and because of this, the banks will have less money with them to give loans to the public. And because of all these things, the money supply will reduce in the economy and inflation will automatically come down. Repo and reverse repo rates. Friends, when you and me need loans, we go to the bank. But when the bank needs loan, it goes to the RBI. So the rate at which the banks borrow money from the RBI is known as repo rate. And when the banks have excess cash with them, they can park it with the RBI and earn interest on the deposit, which is known as reverse repo rate. So during inflation, what will be done by the RBI? So RBI will increase the repo rate, which means if the banks now borrow money from the RBI, the interest rates is high and hence banks will borrow less money from the RBI. Also, whatever money they borrow from the RBI, the banks are paying higher interest to the RBI and because of which they will pass on the high interest rate to the consumers because of which the interest rate on the loans taken by us also increases. So due to increase in repo rates, banks will borrow less from the RBI and consumers will borrow less from the banks because of which the money supply in the economy will come down and it will automatically lead to reduction in inflation. Apart from that, RBI can also increase the reverse repo rates which means if the banks invest their money with the RBI, they will earn more interest. Thus, taking the money from the bank and to the in the hands of the RBI because of which again money supply in the economy will come down and then it will also bring down the inflation. Currently friends, the repo rate is 5.4 percentage and it was increased from 4.9 percentage in August 2022 and reverse repo rate is 3.35 percentage. You can check out the links given in the description of the RBI circulars and notifications regarding all this CRR, SLR and repo rates. So to summarize friends, during inflation, RBI will increase the CRR, SLR, repo rates and reverse repo rates okay, to suck the money supply in the economy and thus inflation will come down and during deflation, it will do the reverse of this. So I hope now you understand how RBI performs this magic show of reducing the inflation. Like how RBI manages the money supply in India. If you want to manage your money well, then check out the new ET Money app whose membership known as ET Money Genius helps you build a portfolios of mutual funds and stocks plus ETFs. This portfolio is suggested to you based on your risk appetite and time horizon for which you need to answer a set of personality and assess risk assessment questions. Its dynamic asset allocation, basis market conditions helps you in getting better returns relatively. If someone had invested in Genius's high growth mutual fund strategy for any 7 years in the last 15 years, he would have earned a return of 6.1% annually. 
For viewers of Comberla channel, there is a free trial period of 45 days. Download the app from the link given in the description and also to know more about the app, check out the description. If you all like this video, do share it with your friends and family and make sure they also get to know and learn this financial literacy. Check out the description. Also, if you want to read some of the good interesting articles about inflation and RBI, this is CS Karthik signing off. Thank you and I will see you all next video. Namaste.